Howdy, boys and girls. Here's another figure of mine. This one right here, his name is Lil Feller, and uh, I got him from Dan Pace. Let's see, how long did I get him? It was over a year ago. What Dan said was that he's a one of a kind, and there's no other one like him out there. So, it's kind of cool. I like it having a one-off figure from Dan Pace. I mean, just look at him. He's got he's got a crazy look, and he's like that McElroy look. So that's why I like them. And he does have a feature like the McElroy figures as well, not just some of the looks like they have that crazed eye animated look, clowny look. Uh, he also does something special that they can do, right, little feller? Can you do that for us? Yes, I can. Can you do it right now? Sure. Go ahead and do it then, if you would. I'd appreciate it. So you can see, his nose like that. Yeah. So this is the first figure I bought from Dan Pace, which led me to talk about making me a fat. Little feller does talk like this. I talk like this. He kind of talks like a southern guy. It's a sort of southern kind of thing. I don't know what else to call it. Yeah, I don't know what to call it either. One of, the, one of the things I want to show is unique to Dan Pace figures, the hands. No matter what figure they are, <laughs> how big they are or small, the hands are the same. They're very hard. I can feel it in my head. It's almost, it's like rock almost, this plaster material he uses. and uh, So he obviously has a mold he uses. Not my favorite kind of hands. I don't like them. They're very heavy and clumpy and they just... <sighs> You could really hurt yourself with them. But actually, they're good if you want for a um, you want to use them as a weapon. But I'm going to show you right here. These are hands, the same hands as on Little Feller, but they were on Fats. And you can imagine Fats is a lot bigger than Little Feller. And so I had to uh, I looked and searched, and I got nice big hands for Fats that I replaced myself, and I cut these off. But Little Feller still has them. And I'm like, well, I still don't like them on Little Feller, even though they're more for his size. But I just bought some hands for him. And I will be putting those on him. Without having the unboxing of Little Feller, I never got to show him unboxed. Before I was filming myself unboxing figures. But his clothes have been completely changed. These are not the original clothes that um, Dan had on him. I got him new shoes. And socks and pants, my uh, jeans, and even a different shirt. Everything's different on them. Uh, wait, did the shirt, did I replace the shirt? I must have, right? I don't know. Maybe the shirt's original still. I'm not sure. I can't remember now. I would think I changed it, but it could be his original, original shirt. I'm not sure. Anyway, so if you want to see his mechanisms, see, I've got a 9 volt battery right here that works with the light turning on in his nose and there's a button right here in the back you press that lights it up battery can go bad and you may want to change it once in a while there you go boom pressing that button um, right here in the front this side is the mouth this string right here pushes down for the mouth this string on this side does the eyebrows that go up. And even has a plastic piece underneath here, it's hard to show, that um, the two string are running through up into the head. In the back, there's another screw, but this this particular metal uh, turner here is a, a one piece, and not a separate one here and a separate one here, although there's two strings, but those two together work the eyes. So there you go, one way or the other. And then they self-center. So the front, got the index finger for the mouth, the, the slot on the mouth. Some people like that, they like the index finger. I'd use both, I'll go either way, depending on the figure. I can be comfortable either way. I did start off as a thumb slot jaw with another figure. This is the uh, raising eyebrows. So that's basically him. 
I'm trying to remember. I'm not sure if I put the eyelashes on him or if Dan did. I forgot. I think Dan put those on. So I didn't really do anything to him myself other than I'm going to change his hands out. Oh yeah, and the hair, of course. Look at his hair. I was. Uh, I wish I could have replaced the hair. I wasn't a big fan of the hair. <laughs> it's just, he's got a froish hair, you could say. Froey, monkey hairish kind of thing to me. He's kind of a monkey man. Yeah, I'm a monkey man. Or a G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe's, I remember when they got hair. Lifelike hair on a G.I. Joe. This is kind of what they pasted on them. He's, I just think he's, he's just a riot. I love this guy. It's a typical body that Dan Pace would use. Inside you can see that um, that base, it's all wood. And the rods, the wood rods that come up to make the torso. And on the bottom there you can see, he even has Dan's uh, card in there. Dan Pace puppetry. And it's got the stuffing legs and arms. Except the hands are the hands made for him that I'm going to change out. Stuffing feet, and of course they're sewn halfway where the knees would be. And for the arms, they don't have that. So it's kind of nice to have that middle where it does that so you can turn it. I do have an arm rod for him somewhere, and I'll probably install that, the hands to replace. I'll do them both together at the same time. And he's pretty cool, as you can see. I got a really good deal on him. Dan doesn't charge a lot, really can for his figures. I mean, he's very reasonable. And he does really good work. I think um, some mechanics on some of them could be a little easier to control and better made, I guess you could say. But but for what he charges, he does a really good job. And I know he does replica kind of stuff if he has the uh, molds like he does for the fats. And that's why I had him do it. So you're a little fella. And he is... Kind of charming. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm going to next do a skit with him that I wrote up. I just wrote up. And I'm going to practice, though. Practice nice, thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good job. What was that? Why'd you do that? Reminds me of something. You want to do it? I want to do it. Yes. Oh, I should. I need another figure to do the other part, though. Could I do both parts? Sure. Why not? Um, we're talking about Jimmy Nelson, who just passed away. So. I guess that's what we're going to do, and it's all because of the sound that just happened when he went. I was like, oh yeah, and you all would know if you know anything about ventriloquism, the history, this commercial. N E S T L E S. Nestle's makes the very best chocolate. That's right. Little feller, we're gonna come back and do a skit, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're broken. You're like a broken record, aren't you? Yeah, you're not talking anymore. That's because you're talking. I can't talk at the same time as you. You're not that good. That's true. I haven't even practiced enough. I know. But you're new to the whole thing anyway. The whole thing as in the entrela quiz. Yeah, that's true. Actually, practicing ventriloquism as opposed to just admiring and having figures, right? Yes, sir. Me. Me. That's why I like him. He can be clowny. Clowny. <laughs> Easy. Oh, he's in suspended animation. Are you okay, little feller? Are you all right, little feller? Come back, come back, little feller. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to stop you mid craziness. Maybe it's not good to stop somebody who's clowning around 
in the middle of the clowning around because things like this could happen. I don't know. Oh, easy. Oh, let go. Come on, little feller. I'm joking around, man. Don't, don't. Come on. Ah, ah. Let go. Easy. Easy. Ah, ah. You let go. Ah.